have you ever considered quitting? But I think it's all behind this kind of shiny veneer. I've also just stopped watching people. Ooh. Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. Mm. So recently I saw Samantha from Thoughts on Tome's video, the booktube AMA, and I loved all of it because I love seeing the behind the scenes of how people do things. I'm also very interested in like community questions, especially someone who's been around booktube for a while. So it was fun to both see her answers, but also the kind of questions she got posed. So I decided that since I'd been wanting to do a sit down and chatty video, I would ask people over on Instagram to ask me anything about authortube. So I did get some questions that weren't authortube specific, so they won't be included in this video, but I do plan to do some more Q and A's in the future amongst some writing vlogs, but this is only gonna be author two. Now, unlike Samantha, I did take a peek at these questions before so that I could kind of organize them because y'all know I love stats. And I like seeing what the most commonly asked questions are. So without further ado, I'm actually going to get into the one that was not the most asked, but very close to the most asked question, which was, is AuthorTube as clicky as it comes across? Or are there AuthorTube clicks? Are you in one? So I did not brainstorm any answer for any of the questions other than this one, because I've been asked this before on live streams and stuff, and I've just been like, no, of course there are no clicks. What are you talking about? Um, but maybe, maybe kind of there are clicks, but only in the way that like, I'll put it this way. Shall I? Did I brainstorm any of this? Doesn't sound like it, does it? My family moved a lot, so I was the new kid very often. I was used to walking into the lunchroom and being like, oh, I don't know where to sit. And you see these groups of people all around and you see groups of friends. I do think if you're just starting out on AuthorTube, it can kind of look like that. And I do sit somewhere at a lunch table, but all of my friends who were at the lunch table with me were people that I'm, like we started school together, right? because let's just go with this analogy. <laughs> and we started AuthorTube around the same time. Jessica Williamson, Becca C. Smith, like those were some of my first friends on AuthorTube and some of my first friends have left. They graduated, I'm sorry, I'll stop now. Anyways, slowly you fill out more of your table as you meet more people, but it's only because like, I know Kevin and Laura better because Jessica's really good friends with them. Or I know Hina because Becca's really good friends with her. So it's like that kind of thing. So I think you branch out like that. I don't think any of the clicks are purposeful, but I do recognize that if you're coming into it just to start, it can look like that. Because it can be hard to compete with friendships that have had years in the making. Yeah, I think that's it. But obviously it's not impossible. I meet new friends all the time and it's always great. And I think the camps, like I met Emily and Phoebe and got to know them really well through Camp NaNoWriMo, I think this time last year. So the answer is more of a yes, but. Yes, but there are clicks, but it's not in a bad way. It's not in like a, ooh, you can't sit with us kind of way. Hmm, let's move on. Another question I get asked frequently, not just for this AMA, but actually Emily asked me this the other day, which is, does AuthorTube actually help your writing or is it more of a distraction? This one got asked so much, so other variations. How does it hinder your productivity, if at all? Does it give you more accountability? And does video production ever get in the way? So the actual filming is rarely a distraction. Like normally I'm filming vlogs and that's just like, I needed a break to think about what I was doing anyways. So the actual filming is never a distraction. What is a distraction is the editing because you just, you can really only do editing at once. And it's not even the thing where you can really listen to a podcast at the same time, or at least I can't. And then after that, when you get into like the production of it and like putting it up on YouTube, I multitask that a bunch too. And I'll do it in waves and spurts. So that never feels like it's taking that much time. It's literally just the editing. So if the theoretically, I would use all of the time that I am editing to write, then yes, it's a hindrance on my productivity. But I don't think that I do. You will notice some weeks I don't make as many videos. And usually that's because either like my mental headspace isn't right, or it is because I'm genuinely that busy with work. So there are ebbs and flows. That's why I try not to like put out a schedule for when I'm making videos um, because I know I personally can't stick to it if work's extra crazy or if I'm, I'm like really in the zone with one story or something. So 
yeah. I will say as for accountability, you know, for as much as I'm talking about not having a schedule, I do try and get two or three videos a week. And so I tend to schedule around when certain videos need to go out or when I would have needed to film, I'll put something on the screen showing you kind of how I do it. But I think that also helps me rather than thinking I have all the time in the world to write and working for yourself. It's important to have some sort of schedule, I guess is what I'm saying. And AuthorTube provides that for me or it helps to provide that for me. The next question is, as your audience has grown so much in the past year, do you feel more pressure to publish? Yes and no, because I feel other pressures. <laughs> now the pressure is not that I would ever put out something before I was ready, but I do think uh, AuthorTube can help feed into this like perfectionistic side because now I'm like, oh, it's not just maybe two pairs of eyes on the book and hoping that they'll buy it, which is a great problem to have. But now it could potentially be like, a hundred pairs of eyes immediately on this book who have just bought it and if there's anything wrong that's terrifying so it's a different level of pressure but also I do you know I love sharing the process and I think that uh, there's something nice in sharing the ups and downs of it but also I do feel like I'll get questions asking about the Meridian Maps or like Project Death and like when will they be published and I'm just like I don't know so other than feeling bad about having to give an I don't know answer it hasn't done too much to the pressure other than again feed my perfectionism. <laughs> Going into this because there was another question asking do you make content for author tubers or for a more general audience? So here's the thing right I make content for just anyone who likes writing videos and some people inevitably who like writing videos will want to try making the videos themselves. Um, just the same way that people who love reading books might one day want to write a book for themselves. So the other thing to note here is that while there might be some external pressure to publish with some people saying that they'd really like to read my books. AuthorTube is still targeting writers usually. There are people who randomly watch that don't write, but like mostly it's writers. And obviously who I want to be targeting with my book is readers. And so I don't think of them as the same way, like not, I'm not trying to market towards AuthorTube. Does that make sense? So then in that way, the pressure also is lessened to publish because I'm hoping that my readers are far outside of my author tube audience potentially like I don't want it to just be limited to the people that who know me through author tube I want it to just be like readers in general so so that also helps to lessen the pressure to publish a little bit yes <laughs> in terms of a starting out question is it more difficult to gain a following if you're not reading or writing YA fantasy or sci-fi I have not noticed this I know that this is definitely something people talk about within the booktube community um but when I think about my friends in the author tube community I don't think so especially because again author tube is for other writers and I don't know that I've ever necessarily cared what someone was writing. It's more just like if I like the way that they talk about writing in general. Or maybe I'm completely wrong, but I don't personally follow someone because they write what I write. Also because I write so many different things, like my Camp Nano story is an adult murder mystery. So no, no, I don't think so. Comment down below, let me know if I'm wrong. <laughs> the next question is, have you ever had anybody recognize you in public from your channel? And yes, actually three different times. And I remember them vividly <laughs> because I don't expect it. One time was in San Antonio and I actually follow her on Instagram now. And she's really fun at this like comic book video game store. And that was really cool. I was with one of my friends and then I have been recognized at Disney World when I was by myself, which was really cool. And then she hopped on a live stream like the next day and that was fun. And then also one time in Dallas when I was with another friend at a Starbucks kind of sort of writing so I think at least that one the context fit a little bit better but oh my gosh okay okay Woo! coming back into frame with literally so many things okay so I have a PO box that people send me stuff sometimes and I finally bought some postcards so that I could respond to some people that I have the address of I've kept all of them with the exception of if I lost a couple in the moving between desks which I hope I haven't and then not everyone had their address like for instance this one that I just picked up yesterday from DL Ballantyne but they sent me this hat too. Look at how cute it is. Can you read that? I just washed it. So there's like a little bit of stuff on it, but books turn muggles into wizards. How cute is that? So anyways, y'all know I love a good hat. And so I'm just so excited. Anyways, I know that wasn't exactly the question, but it was kind of sort of the point being. I have postcards now. <laughs> For another community question, do you feel that AuthorTube is diverse enough? No. No, this is one of those things that I think it is getting more diverse as more and more people join. But I mean, there are a bunch of, you know, white 
late 20s, early 30s women with an author tube, so. I'm trying to make a conscious effort because the question is, what can I do? Like when I was doing my, I tried writing like author tubers, I tried to pick people that didn't all just look like me. And when I'm even doing, I tried writing like just famous authors, I try and pick from a selection of people. And I have noticed that a lot of the recommendation, like a lot of the requests are a bunch of white guys. So I'm still kind of brainstorming ways. I want to be able to lift up other author tubers. Um, and yes, so yeah, I'm brainstorming. One of the questions is, were you intimidated by anyone within author tube? For the most part, no, especially because of the way that my channel sort of ended up um, randomly exploding. I was a fan of Alexa and Alexa was actually really nice and like took some of her time to help me when I was initially querying the Meridian maps. So I was a little bit starstruck, but also she was so sweet. I think that's the only time I would say slightly intimidated. Yes, but I guess the follow-up question was, what was it like in the beginning? What sparked off the success of your channel? So we're actually coming up on like the one year anniversary of when I did the I tried writing like Stephen King video. I think. March 24th, 2019. Today's March 28th, 2020. <laughs> I think I was around like 2000 subscribers then. I'll actually need to go back and check and I'll again put some stats up over the screen. There's a lot of benefit from the YouTube algorithm and a good idea and also having, this is very important, like a backlog of a lot of content for people to go to and then subscribe to you from. Nothing has been that level I tried writing like JK Rowling did really well too. And that gave me another little boost at the end of July, August. And then it just kind of goes on its own as YouTube tends to recommend stuff. So I think that sparked off the success, but I don't think I would have had that if I didn't have a backlog of other videos for people to watch. So there's actually a lot here to go with like the publishing world in some ways. There's like a healthy dose of luck if we want to count the algorithm in as some amount of luck, which I think we should because even though people try to game it, you know, everyone knows the ways to game it. So then does it actually work? I don't know. I certainly didn't at the time. So luck and then one good idea and a backlog of content or continuing to build on that, I guess is what I would say. But what it was like in the beginning was that I made some really good friends and I got to see my channel grow just like a little bit. And that was so fun. And no part of me forgets about how awesome it was to hit like the first hundred subscribers and how long that took me. And I have screenshots um, from when I did like hit even these little milestones. And I thought it was so cool. So yeah. Do you find since joining you're more motivated to write? I don't know that it personally affects my motivation any. I also didn't start my channel until I was already working for myself and had basically all day to write. So I don't know that actually AuthorTube has impacted it that much. AuthorTube has led me to some crazy ideas. Like I would not do 24 hour write-a-thons without AuthorTube. I might try writing like authors or I might've just looked it up and been like, oh, that's interesting. Um, so in some ways AuthorTube has affected my writing, but also like not really. For another community question that I got several times, do you feel competent Competition with other author tubers? Do you feel jealous? Do you feel discouraged by the progress of other author tubers? Um, so Natalia Lee made a video a while back and I think she talked about this really well. And I said to her in a comment that once upon a time I felt jealous of someone and it has happened only once. And it was Alex at the Patchwork Nerd who I love who I love. At least for me, there was some amount of wishing that I could be like Alex, um, who's like very calm and chill. And I love her channel for a lot of reasons that I'm like, uh, that I, mine could never be. She was like kind of close to me in subscriber count at the time, I guess. And then she was getting really popular as she should because she's incredible. I think that's the only time though. And I had my own little moment where I was like, oh my God, girl, what are you doing? You cannot be like, she's great, stop being jealous. And so that was it. I do think some amount of that is natural. Um, I think Natalia talked about it really well. As for any competition since then, no. And no to discouraged by the progress of others. It's mostly motivating. I'm sure there are little hints of like, ah oh, man, they're farther along than me. I do still feel like that sometimes, but usually I can like look inward and I'm like, but why are you feeling this way? And it has zero to do with the other person and entirely to do with yourself. And then I just kind of refocus my energy and that helps a lot because that's usually what I needed in the first place. <laughs> For another community question, <laughs> regarding the tea. What do you think about how AuthorTube has changed since hashtag arcs are free? Also plus one for what do I think of a particular person who I'm not going to name because I made that mistake once before. <sighs> 
I think that people are more likely to call other people out because I think for a while people were not about that. In fact, there was a lot of drama that I didn't even know about until around that time, only because other people like weren't really saying anything, which I can appreciate because I did learn about the like not naming people while still discussing the issue, or at least that's now the personal line that I've drawn, which I had not drawn before or didn't really think about before. I think a lot of us silently lurk on guru gossip now. I think that's changed stuff. I talk to more author tubers now because of that, and I'm much more likely to message someone and be like, hey, have you heard anything about this? Or what's up with this? Or like, that's kind of not cool, right? So that's what's changed for me at least. I hope and think that the community is now keeping people more accountable, potentially. Better dissemination of information. Yeah. Will you ever have a writing group meetup or event? I think that would be so much fun. I think I would have to be in like a biggish city for that to be reasonable. I do think it would be so cool to be like, hey, let's all meet up at this coffee shop and just write for a little bit, like our own little version of a write-in, but actually in person and like months far in the future, since obviously that would not work right now. And if you are somehow watching this video in the future, there was a pandemic. Um, so. I also just don't know that there would be that much interest in any one given place. So yeah, it would take some planning, but I think it could be fun. Do you ever feel unsafe or uncomfortable when you post a video about a certain topic? Or another question was, is it scary at times sharing personal things or thoughts? Um, yes and no. This is something I go in and out of how much I personally want to share about anything. Obviously I've had my family on my channel and I've had a couple of friends, people that I've been friends with for ages. Actually some of them almost decades or a decade. And then of course other author two friends, but I do think it's hard discussing anyone you've started dating or any new friends, especially if you met potentially and they did or didn't know about the YouTube channel, that whole thing's kind of weird. And I've talked before about sharing personal thoughts on religion. I'm agnostic, but was at one point religious. So like getting into that is a whole can of worms too, even if I've wanted to sometimes, but I'm just like, nah. That's not to say I wouldn't in the future, but I do think that there is some amount of me thinking other people are gonna watch this. Not only are other people gonna watch this, but other people who might already have an idea of you are gonna watch this. And it, it gets a little bit complicated that way. And then I wouldn't necessarily say unsafe. I do think uncomfortable, even when I'm sharing struggles with something. Again, you wanna be open and honest about the process of like writing and where your mental headspace is at regarding all sorts of things. But then of course, people are gonna have opinions on that. And some people, won't even really listen to what you said and will form an opinion on that and decide that you need to know about that opinion. Um, and as someone who still reads all of her comments or reads most of them, you know, you're gonna see that and that's always a little bit of a bummer. So I've had my own kind of reckoning with how I feel about mean comments, but not unsafe. At times uncomfortable. <laughs> Is it difficult to come up with content for AuthorTube all of the time? No, I have a surplus of ideas always. I will once again show on the screen kind of like the system with which I have it all figured out and try to come up with plans, but they're always changing. It's a good problem to have, but also like it's a lot in here all the time. So one of the questions is like, how do you motivate yourself to post or figure out what to post? So I'm gonna combine these two because sometimes I try to post topically, like if Camp NaNoWriMo is coming up or Preptober is huge, good time to post, good time to meet new author tubers. So there's the topical videos, there's the random writing experiments that I like to do and think up. And then there's like random chatty videos where I just had a topic because I was sitting at my computer all day by myself and was like, man, I really want to talk to someone about this dumb writing thing. So that's usually how I come up with any of my video ideas. For figuring out what to post, this is something that's kind of constantly changing anyways. Like I have done NaNoWriMo daily vlogs the past three years, but I actually noticed this past year, and this is like an author to like 401 question or something potentially. But I noticed that what happened is that my views started to decline. They actually declined a lot on even old videos because YouTube had basically stopped recommending stuff because I'd become too narrowed on NaNoWriMo. It was very interesting to kind of watch happen. And so my channel in December and January, you can kind of see, had like taken a step down, I guess, from what I was used to. And so now it's trying to figure out if I take on the stress of doing NaNoWriMo daily vlogs again, if it could potentially do the same thing. I don't know. So that's something I have to figure out. <laughs> There's a whole thing on numbers there. If anyone's interested, y'all can uh, reach out to me 
I don't know anyone who would be that interested <laughs> in the 401 course. Course. There is no course. Another question I got a lot community related, what would you want to change content about AuthorTube? Anything I don't like about it? What do I like the least? On and on. What would you want to change? I think this is hard because I just don't watch people that I'm not interested in the content that they're making. So I think it goes more to what content do I want to see in the future. I like vlogs. I like discussion videos. Laura Wrights has been doing a lot of really fun discussion videos. She also recently started, um, gosh, what's the book club called? I'll put it over the screen, but it's a book club about writing craft books. Is it craft? What is it called? I think that's a genius idea. I can't believe that hasn't happened before. I know people have been doing all the Save the Cat stuff, but I love that Laura's doing it for all sorts of craft books. And I'm so excited. That's stuff I would like to see more of. Go Laura, go. I wish there was some way, except that of course, really when you think about AuthorTube, this could go back to the click thing. It's not an organized thing. It's not like a club. It's not like you're in or you're out. Like it's just people posting videos to the internet. But I wish I had some better way of like finding other people and there's just not one. I know there's a lot of like um, spreadsheets and I know there's the AuthorTube subreddit and stuff, which I do use sometimes still, but like there's no good way to be organized. And then I deleted the Facebook that I had for Kate Kavanaugh because I just don't like Facebook. And so I'm not even part of that community or group anymore either. So some of this is on me admittedly as I'm talking about this. And I think all of the changes that I've wanted to see, I've either spoken about them before already and continue speaking about them because they're kind of like the same issues I've had. I've also just stopped watching people and that has helped me so much for like my personal zen is that if I didn't like the content or the content was making me mad, I just stopped watching. Were you familiar with AuthorTube before you joined? And if so, was it what you expected? No, I think I've talked about this in other videos, but all I've known, I watched a lot of booktube. I still watch a lot of booktube, as you can probably tell because I watched a booktube AMA to come up with this idea. I think at the time it was a lot smaller and people were talking about how it should be right tube instead of author tube, but author tube sort of stuck. And so I had no expectations going into it. I was just like, oh, wow, cool. There's a book tube spinoff, which is how I thought of it, of people who were writing books instead of just reading books. The interesting thing I've seen is that obviously more and more booktube people or people who have booktube focused channels are also watching authortube stuff or randomly making authortube videos. I really don't think there should be as divided a line, though I do understand why conceptually a lot of us make that mark. And that's kind of a fun shift to see too. Has anyone in the community ever been shady to you or looked down on you? I don't think so. I talked about it in my two weeks in Toronto video, but when I went to the Wander Writers Retreat, I think it was almost the opposite um, because at the time it had just happened that my um, channel had exploded a little bit back in like April 2019. It's like people who know you really well but also watch a lot of your videos and then in person though I think I'm exactly like this it takes a while to get to know me and also the vlogs are very much like my own head because it's just me and the camera. So like if you asked Becca and Brooke and Jessica and Phoebe and Emily like the, I'm the same weirdo as ever and if you've watched any of the live streams but when there's big groups of people, I think I'm a little bit more standoffish. And I think that combined with potentially sometimes having like a bigger platform makes you look like you're being snooty. So I was worried at the time that people thought I was being a butthead when I was just like, I get nervous around big groups. <laughs> so I don't think anyone's looked out on me and I hope I've never given that impression to anyone else, but I could see how it might look like that. As for Shady, I think anyone who's had an issue with me that I am aware of has told me. So, so, no. How do you make friends within the community? Live streams, live streams, live streams. I have made so many friends from going to live streams, but also people attending my live streams. You'll see the same faces sometimes. And I understand not everyone likes live streams, like they just want the videos instead, but commenting does the same thing. A lot of my friends I made just cause we were commenting back and forth on each other's channels. Like I remember Becca was doing NaNoWriMo daily vlogs back in 2018, which I think is when we met. And it, she just commented on each other's videos every day. And it was so cool and it was so fun and yeah that's how I 
made friends. That's how I still try and make friends is just commenting on their videos. I've admittedly been bad about that recently, but it's something that I'm slowly getting more into as I get more into AuthorTube again, because I do ebbs and flows. Also, kind of going back to the click thing, because the friends I have now were either friends I met at the time that I started, like we started together, or they're friends of friends that are now my friends kind of thing, I just advise looking around at the people who are also starting out at the same time as you and then kind of branching out. And then there are people who like Danny from DR Ranger Writing, he's been really good about getting into my Instagram inbox and being like, will you join on this collab? And I'm like, heck yes. So I really love watching his stuff now too. And the story detective who's been organizing huge things. If you can get in on that, um, I think it's really helpful to meet other people that way. And I think these giant collabs are just a good way to see some new faces. So yeah. And by get in on that, I think you can just ask people or maybe even attempt to organize some yourself. I'm always down to participate in a collab. I just don't always see the invite in my email or in my like Instagram inbox. Um, so it's not because I don't want to, it's usually just because I haven't seen it. Some other community-esque questions, and these are gonna go together because I think this is actually going to be a problem that I'll face more in the future, but haven't really faced now. If you hate a book, will you give it an honest review and favorite book written by an author tuber? I have only read two books written by author tubers, and that is because I have a lot of nerves actually associated with that. So the first book I ever read was Rise by Becca C. Smith, my good friend. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even tell her I was reading this book until I was already... I actually read it first on um, my Kindle because it was free on Kindle. I think it still is. I think I got to like page 100 or so before I let her know because I was so nervous that I wouldn't like it and I didn't want to have to have that conversation if I didn't like it. Because again, so much of this comes down to like personal preference and taste. And I know that Becca's really professional, so it was never going to be about it being bad. It was just going to be if it was not personally my thing. Um, except it's perfect because it was my thing. So much so that I finally bought them and uh, I have all of them. I have not yet read the other two, but I have plans to. And then the only other one I've read is In a Mirror by Emily Bourne, another friend of mine. And I actually beta read that book for her, which is gonna be really fun because I think I'm slowly gonna be beta reading... What was that? I think I'm gonna be beta reading for more of my other two friends in the future, or I really hope to. And I hope to one day be comfortable enough to share it with them. I mean, my writing. But if the question is, will I share a review of a book that I didn't like that was written specifically by an author tuber? The answer is probably no. One, because I'm DNF friendly and will just stop reading most of the time. <laughs> and two, because again, it all comes down to personal taste. And at this point, I feel there's like some amount of responsibility because I have like kind of a platform within, again, the specific author tube world that I wouldn't want to do that to someone else um, when I'm just one reader. But as for other books, I've talked about, you know, popular books that I didn't personally like and I feel comfortable doing that. And then several of y'all will have watched my A Discovery of Witches vlog where I was reading that for our AuthorTube chat pick and saw how I felt. <laughs> So I'm not opposed to openly talking about books that I don't like, but it probably won't be another author tubers. Oh, that being said, our current author tube chat book club pick of this month, um, or for April, is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So like by the time this goes up, I haven't started reading it yet. So you have time still, for sure. <laughs> Join us. And I've heard this one's actually like really good. So accepted. Has anyone befriended you to get more popular? How did you deal with it? Not that I am aware of. I have been made aware that some people have told friends of mine or friends of friends of mine um, that they wish that like they were friends with me so that I would talk about them on my channel because I do talk about my friends all the time, obviously. Or like even doing live streams with my friends, which is one of those things where it's like, I totally understand the concept, but is also like, why did you tell my friend or my friend of my friend? <laughs> because of course I'm gonna find out. I'm also potentially naive in that I don't think anyone could fake liking me long enough <laughs> to actually see any benefit from it if they didn't actually like me. So there is some amount of fear associated with that, but like the tiniest of amounts. How long does it take you to make videos? This is a question that was asked a lot too. Filming, editing, and how long does it take to have ideas? So again, plethora of ideas. Usually what happens is that I will write them down for some future date. Some video ideas I've had or forever and just keep getting shuffled down. Some ideas I have immediately and I go and I do it and then that's it. Filming a vlog, I almost don't count that as filming time because 
like a lot of the time I'll just set up my camera and then I'll be typing and I'll be doing a time lapse or something you know and then again the time spent talking to the camera during a vlog is usually just me thinking through and processing things and I needed a break from writing anyways so it really doesn't count almost. Editing I'll actually put the stats up for this video, how long it took me to edit and how long the footage of this actually is because this is going to be a long video. I think I figured out in other videos that if it took me like 15 minutes to film, I will condense that video down to like seven minutes or so, but it will have taken me like 30 minutes to edit. So I think double the length of the filming if it's a sit down and chatty video, if it's a vlog, or if it requires stuff to be on the screen it takes me longer. The freaking 24 hour write-a-thon every time, I hate editing that video. <laughs> it's so fun because I like watching my descent into madness, but I hate editing that video because I like to go over and put like hour timestamps. And that is so frustrating because I don't actually have the time on the footage. So I have to have edited it fully down to what I want the video to look like and then watch it through again for each of the hours. And like there's, it doesn't take that full amount of time, but it's pretty close and that video is so long. Anyways, some videos suck. Again, editing's the, it's not the worst part, I was gonna say. It's the most time consuming part. I actually think editing's really fun in a way. So if you don't like editing, I think you should learn to just um, be good with all the ums. <laughs> Which you can still be on AuthorTube and not have edited your videos that much. I'm just not that person. What advice do you have for new AuthorTubers trying to grow their channels, supplies, equipment, editing, etc.? I filmed on my phone for a year. I think your phone is fine. Once upon a time I was editing on Windows Movie Maker, but now I just edit on iMovie, which is free if you have a MacBook. It comes with it. That was actually part of the reason I got the MacBook when I needed a new computer. Um, so it was just perfect timing anyways. You don't need to buy anything. I would recommend you not buy anything until you've done like a few months of videos so that you know if you like it. For supplies I have now, I use all natural lighting. As you can see, the lighting has changed a lot over the course of this video. I do have a Canon EO5 Rebel SL2, which I've talked about in the past. And again, I edit on iMovie. The point is, I don't think you need the best supplies. I would focus on what it sounds like first, because I will be more forgiving of visual issues than I will audio issues. But then also if you can get any amount of natural lighting or bright lighting, or I use lamps and I'll point them at my face sometimes. So I still do that. <laughs> For the follow-up question of the same kind of thing, how does one get started? Any tips? What's the hardest part about getting started? Um, just start. I think it's really easy to overthink things. I actually think it might be harder now as the community's grown um, than when I was doing it when I didn't know that there was really any community about writing. Um, so I recognize that this might not be the same feeling it once was, but it's just like writing a book. You just gotta start it, you know? I definitely think we can overthink ourselves and it is nerve wracking to put your face out into the internet somewhere. So beyond just do it, I think the other thing is to try and give yourself time to get used to it because you can go watch old videos, which again, I have done in the past and I'm way less comfortable and that's fine. I was actually talking to Robert because um, he's now been on my channel four times, I think where he was like the special guest of the video and was in the whole video basically. He's popped up here and there in other ones. Um, but he said it was only that time that he really felt comfortable in front of the camera. So we'll say four times plus random bits here and there. So maybe a total of like seven videos before he really felt comfortable in some capacity. And he's a character in himself, but that's also with him giving me full power over the edit anyways, you know, so I can understand it might have taken a little bit longer for him, but I think it took me way longer. Like it's, again, it's a natural progression. You just gotta be okay the first couple times not being as comfortable. Go to anyone's AuthorTube newbie tag video and they are not the same person then as they come across now, unless you were someone like Kevin or Laura who had channels before and were already sort of more comfortable on camera. So give yourself time. Just do it, give yourself time. Yeah, have you ever considered quitting? No, I've taken longer breaks, but I don't think I'd ever consider quitting, frankly, just because I really like it. It's a lot of fun. And because I don't put pressure on myself to always produce a video at a certain time, I just know that about myself and know that it wouldn't work for me, even though that is good advice, it just wouldn't work for me. It's helped me to keep it fun, you know? And it really feels like 
a diary log entry of like what my writing life is like and it's always fun to go back and see what I was working on at a given time so if I think about it completely for me I wouldn't stop doing it and the audience just kind of serves as a bonus. If there is some time in the future that I might quit there could be. I don't know if YouTube gets really frustrating <laughs> to upload to I guess that might be a reason to quit. Other than that I can't really think of anything. I'm sure life circumstances could change where I would take a longer break or maybe I really would quit. Who knows but like not it would have to be kind of an extreme case. I like doing this. Do all author tubers have the same opinions on everything? This is clearly not the case. The answer is no. <laughs> in lots of ways, either if they want to be traditionally published or self-published or even if you want to target um, the AuthorTube audience and try and sell to them. That's a hot button issue and there's like a full spectrum of thoughts and feelings on this. I think Marissa Mohi has made some videos that I've really liked about how she thinks that anything you create can basically be sellable to anyone. That's a really poor summary but I do think you should check out Marissa's videos. <laughs> she thinks about this a little bit differently than me but I really appreciate her thoughts and then there are some other people that I just flat out disagree with their actions on and then of course there are people who give a whole lot of writing advice. <sighs> I've made videos in the past where I think people should be upfront about how much experience they have depending on what kind of advice they are giving other people obviously don't agree with me otherwise they wouldn't be doing the thing that they're doing that frustrates me. So no. The answer is no. <laughs> we don't all agree. <laughs> and obviously I'm coming at it from my perspective right and I'm sure those people are like shut up. So <laughs> um, I got the question do you feel pressure to keep up with booktube trends? So I'm gonna do booktube or author tube. I think trends are so fun. The I tried writing like videos were because I saw a different part of YouTube doing like I tried living like blank for a day and I was like I can do that for writing. I think trends are a blast. I'm loving all the tier ranking system people are doing for books and book characters. I'm trying to think of a way I can make that writing related and I just haven't done it yet. So I don't feel a pressure to keep up with trends. I feel like uh, inspired by the trends and how can I morph this and make it into something fun for me. Sometimes I will say that there are certain videos where you're like we all posted something kind of similar at the same time and you're like dang it I wish I was either the only one or that I posted it sooner but even then I don't think that's that big of a deal. The other thing is that we don't know what everyone's videos are gonna be obviously especially because there are so many author tubers now so it can be so hard when you realize that you've made a video that's almost exactly like someone else and you're like dang it I don't even talk to that person and now it looks like I've copied them or that I'm disagreeing and this is a response video when it's not we just all like the freaking muses were all here for all of us at the same time. I wish there was a way to pinpoint what we all must have seen that got all of us thinking around the same lines but giving our own perspective on it because that is fascinating to me. Um, but again not really any pressure. This one was really interesting to me. Do you think AuthorTube gives or can give young or new writers unrealistic expectations? Yes and no. Yes and no. Yes and no is like the answer to all of these questions. Sorry guys. <laughs> yes I think some people watch my videos sometimes and if you haven't been watching my channel for a really long time you're like wow how does she have all day to write? And two how does she write so much when they don't know about my work situation or living situation? Also that. Nor do they know about how I like to write which is again that I zero draft a lot of words and then revision takes me longer. So something can look impressive to some people when really they just don't know how I write is just so much different than how they write. So yes. I also think like catchy thumbnails and catchy titles for videos can be like oh my gosh which I totally do the thing too so I'm, it's not like I'm calling other people out. I'm calling myself out. But I do think people can be like whoa and then not you know sometimes you don't even watch the whole video. So I think that can give unrealistic expectations. I also think that again people aren't always honest and upfront about the things that lead them to being able to do certain things. I'm gonna go back to that freaking Guardian article about all of the little things that can add up to allowing writers to make their money. Sometimes they live at home with their grandparents. Sometimes they have a spouse that works. Sometimes they are are a hermit and live in the Midwest where it doesn't cost as much money to live and you know they're not going out and spending a lot of money so they don't need as much money in order to make a living from their writing so it's you know but we're not breaking that down each time we're saying something and so I do think 
that and the catchy titles can give a lot of people unrealistic expectations. I hope that the documenting of the struggle helps people to see that it's not like all sunshine and rainbows all the time. But also I know it's for someone like me, it's really hard to document all of the like lows for stuff, especially when then you get all the mean comments as usually then. So then it makes you not want to document those as much or document them for other people. So it's all a self-perpetuating cycle. YouTube is like with anything. It's kind of, you can find pockets of realism, but I think it's all behind this kind of shiny veneer that can definitely look not as realistic. But if you peel back the layers, like an onion or an ogre. I hope that answers the question. We're gonna end with one, one more, which is, are there any small author tubers you like to watch? Plus one, who are your favorites? If I'm going through my subscriptions, someone that I think everyone should be watching right now is Lizelle Sambury. Amazing, incredible. Also, it's really fun to follow her journey because she already has a contract and it's been really interesting to watch her like revisions and agent notes and everything like that. She's also doing conversations with other authors. And so her channel is just a medley of like, all of the cool things. She's currently at 735 subscribers, so she's by no means small, but she should have more is the point. <laughs> Great Fry is another person that I love and she has 92, I think right now. She's so fun. She's in the live streams a lot. She doesn't have as many videos like published or posted yet as some people do, but she's been a part of the community, I feel like for a really long time. And she's hysterical. Her Instagram's really fun to follow. <laughs> and I am excited for all of the updates from her in the future. Obviously I mentioned Becca and Phoebe and Alex at the Patchwork Nerd and who else did I mentioned everyone in this video. <laughs> Jess, Natalia, Brooke, Emily, Danny at DR Ranger Writing. I did mention him. He doesn't have as many subscribers yet. 147 right now as of this filming. He's really funny. I think he's also giving like author tube advice as he's on his journey and doing more videos. He's also done some parodies about writing vlogs and I thought those were hysterical. Felt very called out, but they were hysterical. <laughs> Marissa, I will leave a link down below to everyone that I've already talked about. Lindsay Puckett, Lauren Clark. Lauren Clark cracks me the frick up. So funny. Her video, This Is What I've Written in the Past Decade, had me almost in tears. <laughs> so yes, she has 381. And The Courtney Project, okay. Not a small author tuber by any means. Also someone who should have like a million subscribers. I highly recommend her. She has so much knowledge. She's done a lot of co-writing. She's published so many books. So yeah, again, not a small channel, but like subscribe to her. <laughs> subscribe to all of these people. And again, they will all be listed down below in the description. But I think that is going to be it for this video. If you want to comment down below, if you have any other questions or if you feel like I didn't answer all of your questions, or if you disagree with me on any of these, Let's prove that we are author tubers who can disagree on things. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye. Okay. Ha, I almost finished. Almost. Do you see this?